Hello and welcome to Season 2 of Skypothesis. We are super excited to show you the next six builds we've created for this season, and we are kicking it off with the Oblivion Sentinel. We have taken ideas from all corners of fantasy to bring a fresh and unique role-playing experience to vanilla Skyrim. It is our hope that this channel will inspire you to return to the game with new ideas and with a deeper roleplay experience. While other RPGs may be newer, shinier, and have better graphics, none of them scratch the same itch as Skyrim. We love pushing this game to its limits and we want to share our findings with all of you. So without further ado, we're excited to dig into our next character, the Oblivion Sentinel. The Oblivion Sentinel is a powerful vampire lord warrior who uses an arsenal of bound weapons to cut down any who oppose her. Aided by a conjured seeker, she rushes into the battlefield and unleashes a flurry of attacks from her powerful bound weapons before her opponents even know what hit them. She is also an incredibly skilled archer and tactically eliminates dangerous opponents from afar. Always seeking knowledge and power, she is on a quest to unravel the secrets of Oblivion, Mundus, and everywhere in between. She will even seek out deals with the Daedra to further her knowledge and advance her power. Hermaeus Mora is the Daedric Prince of Knowledge, Secrets, and Fate. He invites the Dragonborn to be his new emissary, and the Oblivion Sentinel embraces this position fully. She hunts down the forgotten secrets in the name of her patron Daedra, and in exchange he grants her the power and knowledge she craves. The Oblivion Sentinel had a boring career as a Thalmor foot soldier. She did not think highly of her wizard counterparts, and it didn't help that her applications to be trained as a Thalmor wizard kept getting denied. She repeatedly failed their entrance tests, and over time it left her bitter. It seemed to her that there would be no end to the monotony of the soldier's life, and she was cursed to spend the rest of her life stuck in the same self-defeating loop. However, her military service did give her good combat experience with bound weapons. She worked for a time hunting down insurrectionists in Valenwood before being transferred to Inquisition teams in Cyrodiil. One day, she received instruction that she was to be reassigned to Skyrim to work under Elenwyn, hunting down Talos worshippers. It was, yet again, another dead-end foot soldier position. She rolled her eyes and packed up her stuff. She had two weeks to report at the Skyrim Embassy. She hoped to arrive early, as she wanted some time off to see the sights of solitude and get to know the city. To save time, she tried taking a shortcut through the Jural Mountains to pass through Helgen, and… well, we all know how that ends. Upon escaping Helgen, she takes a look at the mountains and valleys ahead of her, and comes to a realization. Nobody in this country knows who she is, including Elenwyn. She could fake her own death as a tragedy of Helgen. Gone would be the days of boring campaigns and fruitless excursions. Filled with determination, she sets course for the College of Winterhold to begin her new life. The Oblivion Sentinel is a neutral evil character. Her history as an Inquisitor has left her callous, and now she only cares about advancing her own knowledge. She developed a fear of wasting her life away without reaching her potential, so she jumps at the opportunity to become a powerful and immortal Vampire Lord. For this character, we want to explore the implications of an immortal Dragonborn, and how she essentially becomes the new Mirak. Alduin did not waste time raising dead dragons, and the Oblivion Sentinel has eternity to kill them all and absorb their power and knowledge. Her primary objective is to amass all the hidden knowledge and power she can in the name of her patron Daedra, Hermaeus Mora. Skyrim is a land brimming with secrets waiting to be discovered, and she is particularly interested in the lore of the ancient dragon cult. Her quest has many parallels to that of Mirak. A long time ago, Mirak formed an alliance with Hermaeus Mora, granting him the strength and knowledge to rebel against the dragon overlords and the other dragon priests. The resulting battle found Mirak separating the island of Solstheim itself from the mainland. Similarly, the Oblivion Sentinel's partnership with Hermaeus Mora grants her the knowledge and power which she uses to kill Alduin permanently. Mirak and the Oblivion Sentinel are two bookends to the tales of power and of dragons. Neither are heroes, both are straight up evil. But as Mirak began the fall of the dragons, the Oblivion Sentinel rises to power and finishes the job permanently. When the dragon cult was defeated, the ancient Nord heroes buried and sealed their priests along with their ancient knowledge and power. These locations were locked away using specially enchanted dragon claws. Most of the dragon priest dungeons include a word wall, and we like to roleplay this as the ancient knowledge guarded by the sleeping priests. The Oblivion Sentinel would absolutely seek out this knowledge at all costs. Draugr Deathlords can be roleplayed as additional cursed servants of the toppled dragon cult as well. She will take her time with these quests. She's immortal after all and has an eternity to mass all the knowledge she can. One small piece of roleplay that adds to the experience of these dungeons is to remember that the Dragonclaw doors were locked from the outside to keep the Draugr in. 
not necessarily to keep intruders out. That's why the puzzles are also easy to solve. Because she desires knowledge, she will spend a lot of time doing the Black Book quests in Apocrypha and acquiring Daedric artifacts. Priority should be given to the quests that send you to different planes of oblivion, such as Azura's and Sheogorath's quests. She will become Archmage of the College of Winterhold, usurp Harkon's throne in Castle Volkehar, destroy Alduin, and most importantly, assert her place as the most powerful dragonborn in history by taking down Mirak. Their rivalry becomes something spoken of in legends and passed through the ages, the first and last dragonborns dueling to the death at the summit of Apocrypha. This moment should be the climax of her roleplay, so take your time in getting there. It would make sense for her to spend a great deal of time in the Soul Cairn as well, picking apart and learning about the ancient mysteries that lie there. This is where she will learn the spell Summon Arvac, who becomes her trusted steed. Other relevant quests include Forgotten Names, Waking Nightmare, Unearthed, The Wolf Queen Awakened, and Forbidden Legend. One fun piece of the Oblivion Sentinel's roleplay is collecting every book in the game. As a power-hungry knowledge seeker, you can easily roleplay this book collecting and amass a massive library in your player home. If you build a Hearthfire home, make sure to build both the enchanting and library towers. The twin spires look super cool and they are functionally a good match as well. This character can complete almost any questline as long as you can justify that it is for the purpose of seeking greater knowledge and power, so have fun becoming the most powerful dragonborn you can. Now let's dig into creating the character. Her armor ensemble was chosen both for functionality and aesthetics. She has her own unique flair, but the tentacly creepiness of Hermaeus Mora is still represented in the armor. For her boots, we will use Azidal's Boots of Water Walking. There is nothing cooler than walking calmly across the water and into a camp of unsuspecting bandits. You can only imagine the look of terror on their faces when they notice your vampire eyes emerging slowly out of the fog above the water. Make the most of these unique boots. She will also wear ancient Nord gauntlets that you will enchant with Fortify One-Handed and Fortify Archery, Falmer Hardened Armor enchanted with Fortify Health and Fortify Conjuration, and finally, the Ancient Helmet of the Unburned for that sweet 40% fire resistance to counter being a vampire. This can be found in a side room in Labyrinthian, so don't miss it. The antlers present on the female variant of this helmet look so cool combined with the Falmer Hardened Armor. She truly looks like a being that watches the distant horizons on a plane of oblivion. When your enchanting is maxed out, you could look into enchanting your own helmet, but we felt this unique variant was plenty powerful. For auxiliary gear, you will want to enchant a ring of Fortify One-Handed and Fortify Archery, and a necklace of Fortify Conjuration, and resist magic. The Oblivion Sentinel summons her weapons from the Plains of Oblivion. She will use a bound bow for ranged enemies, and dual wield a bound dagger and sword combo for close range fighting. Be sure to keep your bound dagger in your left hand. This will increase the speed of your dual wield power attacks dramatically. In addition to increased DPS, the asymmetrical look of the Conjured Blades is super cool. She will also summon a Seeker from Apocrypha to aid her in combat. When approaching these creatures in Apocrypha, they can sometimes be seen reading books. This suggests that they are actually intelligent creatures. We imagine they fill a similar role to the knowledge-seeking foxes from Wan Shi Tong's library in Avatar The Last Airbender. Per the Skyrim wiki, they technically have the water-walking ability as well, so they'll float alongside you wherever you go. They are one of the tankiest non-undead minions in the game, so they're great to have around to distract and draw enemy fire. They alternate between a weak absorption spell and a decently strong damage spell that also staggers, so they're an extremely versatile minion to have around. Each black book contains a location where you can find a Conjure Seeker spell tome, but you need to have your conjuration skill above level 40 for it to spawn. Being a vampire grants you access to Vampire Seduction and Embrace of Shadows, which will be used situationally in place of the Schools of Illusion. Because we have perked two offensive skill trees, one-handed and archery, we don't have the flexibility to add too many other skill trees until you reach a much higher level. Her desire to seek knowledge will encourage you to dive into other schools of magic once you begin reaching higher levels and have maxed out your combat skills. For Shouts, her power-hungry nature will drive her to collect all that she can, and she will use them all depending on the situation. The ones we most frequently used were Unrelenting Force, Whirlwind Sprint, Marked for Death, and Dragon Aspect. The Oblivion Sentinel will make the most of all the Black Book powers she can. The powers that we have chosen for her roleplay are Dragonborn Force, Secret of Strength, Mora's Boon, Seeker of Might, Lover's Insight, and Black Market. For her stats, we recommend spending the first 10 levels on Magicka. 
Once you have 200, you can start a ratio of 2 health and 1 stamina. We recommend using the Lady Stone, as the health and stamina regen is just too good to pass up for vampires. By the time you hit level 40, you will want the following perks. In Archery, you will put all 5 in Overdraw, Eagle Eye, 1 in Steady Hand, Power Shot, Quick Shot, and Bullseye. In One Handed, you will put all 5 in Armsman, both in Dual Fury, Dual Savagery, Fighting Stance, Savage Strike, and Critical Charge. In Enchanting, you will want all 5 in Enchanter, Insightful Enchanter, Corpus Enchanter, and Extra Effect. This will allow you to scale up the damage of your bound weapons, and to enchant your armor to counteract the detrimental effects of being a vampire. In Restoration, you will take Novice Restoration, Apprentice Restoration for fast healing, Regeneration, and Necromage. Necromage is crucial for any healing spell using Vampire. Finally, in Conjuration, you will want the Novice through Adept perks, Mystic Binding, Soul Stealer, and Oblivion Binding. If you plan to play past level 40, you will definitely want to perk Restoration a little heavier so you will have access to more powerful healing spells. You can also branch out into other schools of magic, along with perking heavy armor for extra protection and utility. As it stands though, the Oblivion Sentinel is very powerful at level 40, which is about where a build begins feeling complete. We usually play on Adept or Expert, but we played this build on Master difficulty with no problems at all. And now moving on to our favorite part of every build, the special moves. First, we have Blade Dash, which is the Black Book ability Seeker of Strength, combined with Whirlwind Sprint and Dual Wield Power Attacks. Unhindered by stamina, she can quickly close gaps and unleash a flurry of unending power attacks. Next is Moore's Deception, which is Conjure Seeker immediately followed by turning around and using Whirlwind Sprint backwards, then follow up with Embrace of Shadows. If you do the three moves in quick succession, it gives the illusion that you have swapped places with a Seeker. Use this to confuse enemies and get yourself out of sticky situations. Finally, we have Cataclysm, which is Blood Cursed Ariel's Bow, followed by Stormcall, and then Vampire Lord Transformation. In our opinion, this is probably the absolute pinnacle of dark destructive power in Skyrim. Darkening the sun will remove the negative aspects of being a vampire during the daytime, and you can cause even more havoc by using Vampiric Grip to pull enemies towards you and then toss them into the dark sky to be blasted by the storm. And with that cataclysmic finish, we are ready to end off today's build and the first episode of Season 2. We are super excited for the rest of this season, and we have some very unique character builds coming your way. We truly believe that Skyrim has near unlimited roleplay potential, and we try to make the perfect combination of playability, aesthetic, and roleplay to come together for a fun Skyrim playthrough. If you like what we do, please consider liking and subscribing to keep the magic of Skyrim alive. And leave us a comment with your ideas, or what makes Skyrim so fun for you. And we'll see you next time, right here on Skypothesis.